Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of Killing Eve Season 4, Episode 5. We're going to try to do this full review without no one shooting us with an arrow. We're going to see if we end up being <laughs> successful with that. I am distraught. Yeah, this was an episode that was made for me because it was all about Carolyn. <laughs> and I know there's some other stuff that went on, too. But if you've been watching our reviews for a while now, you guys already know how much I love the Carolyn character. I know not everybody does. She's just fascinating to me she's just she's so like bad and she plays so dirty and she's so sneaky and i just don't always know what she's gonna do so to get some carolyn backstory i'm like oh okay let's see how it all begins i really like this episode I'm going to have a hot take on it. I don't know if it's that hot, hot of a take. But anyway, before we get into any of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I know we are getting closer to the end mm -hmm. of Killing Eve, as much as I hate to say that. Yeah. But we don't want you guys to miss any of those videos. Also, our coverage of This Is Us, The mm -hmm. Blacklist, Power Book 4, Force, Snowfall, Better Call Saul is yep. coming down the road. Yep, and follow us over on Instagram at Matt and Just TV. Okay. Here is where I'm really coming from. I, I have been a vocal opponent of Carolyn, I suppose we can say, and over the I years. I am in Carolyn's corner. See, okay. I would be so much more in Carolyn's corner if they gave us this episode a year ago. It's like, why did you guys wait until halfway through the final season of this show to finally connect Carolyn there's so many different things. Yes, I know that we knew that she had a history with Constantine. Like, I, I understand that was out there. But it is sort of like, this episode was so important for understanding this character. And I care so much more about her now. But I went Love years, years without caring about her. <laughs> yes, I will, I will be like that belated person who joins the party and everybody's just like, well, why did they even bother to show up? But you know what? This episode did win me over, but it also made me wonder why they took so long. I think, personally, they took so long because of the biggest reveal, which is that she was, you know, a spy and she was infiltrating this anarchist kind of group. And she basically had a hand in creating the Twelve. And I think that that's just... It's such a huge moment that there was no way to really introduce that any earlier. I mean, she named them. And I know at that time that she was in this group that she just thought, okay, I'm in a group of sort of this, this anarchist group. It didn't turn into the 12 of the assassins until way later. But I mean, her hand has been in this since the beginning. Beginning. And I think that that's really important, especially for the people out there that have been thinking that Carolyn is one of the 12. And I now I really don't think she is. I think yeah. she was just like, oops, <laughs> I accidentally like created this group or was part of this group or made this group come together because there are still people from this group that are part of the 12, like Lars, like Constantine. <laughs> I think it's just, it's one of these sort of situations where you get into something and you don't know what it's going to become and you think that there's an opportunity to achieve some sort of goal and then you sort of see things snowball right in front of your very eyes and that's kind of what made this almost an interesting horror story for Carolyn in that she has immersed herself in this world but I don't think she completely understood what she was getting into. It evolved quickly into something totally different. She got betrayed, she got heartbroken, she went through the ringer. That actor that played young Constantine, <laughs> oh my god. I I had a feeling that maybe he was Constantine and that's where they were going with it. And then that actor laughed and he <laughs> had that same like deep hearty laugh as the actor that actually plays Constantine later, like in the present. And I was like, oh my god, it's him. <laughs> so we saw that they had slept together, all yeah. this sort of stuff that was going on, that later, that scene with them down at the dock where they're kind of like, oh, you're KGB. Oh, you're also a spy. And they're pulling guns yeah. out on each other. And, you know, Carolyn confronts him. is like, you know, you were blackmailing my dad and now he's dead. And he's like, yeah, 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 that was me. That was me. And then Lars comes <laughs> out of nowhere being jealous and like firing off his gun and they're paddling him in the lake. It was so well done. 
my favorite scene in the episode. Every, it was <laughs> so weird. It, every, Just the two of them together paddling him. Oh my God. It was okay. Th- this went through so many iterations of everything. It started with Constantine and uh, Carolyn reenacting the Spider Man pointing meme. And then it goes into all of a sudden Lars <laughs> just showing up. Like straight up, it almost felt like straight up out of a soap opera where you see like the guy enter the room and the dramatic music plays. And he's like, ha ha, I know what is really going on here. And it was so over the top. And yes, the there will be very few images in my head in television over the next year that top watching Lars like emerge from the water after he was already potentially dead and then proceeding to then beat him multiple times upside the head and somehow he didn't die from that either. What's also interesting is we never really got to learn what the deal was going to be because right before Lars came out <laughs> of shooting, we saw Carolyn turn to Constantine and be like, Okay, we're gonna make a deal. Yeah, and then blah 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 blah, blah. like, and we never really figured out what it was. No, like, Lars, Lars just screws up everything. That's what we can really say about Lars here at the moment. He... But it did bring up this conversation later, yeah. where we did see Carolyn on the phone with Constantin at a moment where she was just kind of like, "Did you ever think maybe things could have maybe been different for us?" And to even see him have that moment where he's not you know, laughing, joking, whatever, where he just lets out this big breath and is just like, I don't know. Like, maybe. I think it's something he's probably thought about here and there over the years. He probably doesn't allow himself to go down that road all that much. But, I mean, these are two characters who have spent the past you know, several decades putting themselves constantly in danger, dealing with really, really bad people. And, you know, Constantine... What he does, he's so good at it that I don't think there's any other way for him to move forward in life now. And Carolyn, she's so obsessed with taking down the 12. If she doesn't do it, is she ever going to be able to live? And that's what's so interesting about the two of them and the name of this episode, which is Don't Get Attached. And she even tells him that when they first sleep together, and he's like, oh, don't worry, I won't. But we know that they they really are attached. And they really are attached for life for this whole time whether it be you know through what happened in the past him killing her father uh, her going after the 12 like everything that their daughter like it's just a lot that's going on so in the present we have the oh so wonderful reunion between carolyn and lars and i i lars seemed just so eager and happy to have her back after he being knocked upside the head dozens of times decades before yeah we're gonna see how that rolls out i mean carolyn pushed her way in so we'll see yeah that that's one of the things that i'm most disappointed about with it and i, I shouldn't be disappointed because they gave us a lot of other good stuff but it is like they set that up so well and it's like i'm finally on board team carolyn i'm excited for something that she's doing and then it's like the one moment you give us the meeting and they're like ah nah we're not gonna give you the rest of this now no no we'll have to wait for that all right well i get. i guess at this point we should get into eve because i think that's what everybody is probably screaming at their televisions about right now yes okay so we'll kind of start at the beginning with this because i mean i know we all want to talk about the big sort of thing at the end but yeah the, the real thing is is i don't think anybody thinks villanelle is dead no, like no. i think we're all on board with that that isn't actually like I don't think anybody out there is like, oh my God, it really happened. Like, yeah. It's not the way that this is going to end. She's going to die and there's like three episodes left or whatever. It's not going nah. to happen. Anyways, um, so we have Eve really digging deeper into sort of the Lars thing. And, you know, she ends up getting this reel where she ends up watching this reel and she sees young Carolyn and right away is like, Carolyn. Now, here's where my beef with this episode is. While I was watching this episode, before it was revealed that it was Carolyn, I had no idea that that actress was supposed to be Carolyn. Like, they don't look enough alike. And I'm not saying that the young actress didn't do a good job of Carolyn once I figured out who it was. She did. She did a great job. But there is no way that I am looking at her, the young actress, and being like, yes, this is what she's going to look like younger and older. It didn't make the connection for me. So when Eve got it right away, I was like, nah, no, no. dude, no, I don't believe you. 
listen, Eve, there's a lot of things Eve does in this episode that I just don't fully understand. And I think this is just the jumping off point for it. Because then, you know, Constantine was in there too. Why wasn't she like, oh, it's it's Carolyn. Oh, it's Constantine. Like, you know, if you're really that good, then come on. I would have probably recognized Constantine before I even recognized Carolyn. And, it, you know, I know that she was just watching footage and I, you can't see the, hear the laugh the same way or whatever. But at least he kind of looked like Constantine to me, like to some extent. More so, at least, than I would say the young Carolyn looked like Carolyn now. Yeah. Okay. So now we get into the next part of this where Eve has a very bright, brilliant idea when it comes to Helene. Yeah, this, okay, this whole <laughs> Eve story in this episode was like, it, it didn't do it for me. It really didn't. She decides she's going to, you know, oh, you're going to let Villanelle out of jail? Well, I'm going to kidnap your kid to show you that I'm just as tough as you kind of thing. And that, you know, you shouldn't screw with me either. So she goes through all of this. Helen ends up getting her kid back. You know, nothing happened to her. And then... We have this really weird scene where Helen pulls up in her car and is like, hey, so, you know, here's the deal. I kind of thought that you were a, a nothing nobody, but you're really trying to fly with us. And, you know, that's fine. But, you know, I found Lars. You want to get into my car with me and, and I'll take you to him. You just kidnapped my daughter, but yeah. I'm going to help you. And Eve's like, yeah, I want to go. I'm like, oh, dude, what? Bruh, no. <laughs> so she gets into the car with her. Of course, she's not taking her to go see Lars. She just kidnapped her daughter. Yeah. Yeah. So we end up in this situation where Villanelle walks out of seeing Constantine and gets an arrow in the back. And Eve is locked in this car. She can't get out. No. Just watching her die. They have this really intense strangulation moment where she finally lets her out. This entire storyline, I, I have a really hard time understanding Eve's actions throughout all of it. And the only... This is what I'm telling myself, and this may not even be accurate, and you, you guys can let us know what you think about all this in the comments, but I just felt that, are they trying to show that Eve is so obsessed with this idea of taking down the 12 that she is so far down the rabbit hole that she doesn't even understand logic anymore? Because the problem with just kidnapping Helen's daughter, to me, is what does she really get out of this? Like, what is the perceived benefit? Because it's just going to make Helen angry. It's not going to make Helen want to work with her. It doesn't matter anything else that happened in the past. What's happening right now is what is most important. And this is that you have kidnapped her daughter. This is not a manipulation. This is a potential life or death situation for somebody who Helen probably cares about almost more than anybody else on this earth. And I just, I don't understand the end game for this. I just don't get why she thought this would work in any way. I don't believe that Helen wouldn't have just killed Eve. I just don't. That when she had her in that car, she doesn't actually need Eve for anything. She will be able to find all the members of the 12 herself. She knows Lars's name. Like, she knows that she will eventually find him. So... I don't believe that Helen, this is what Helen would have chosen. She's a part of a league of assassins. This outsider kidnapped her daughter yeah. who's like, I don't want to leave Eve. That would have been the end of it right there. Hey, you want to go for a ride? Yeah, I want to go for a ride. <laughs> cool man let's go for a ride to a dirt bed in the woods Ugh. like i just don't get that however yeah. the best scene or one of the best scenes for me heartbreaking scene was watching villanelle with constantin so we had this whole situation yeah. where she was you know killing a bunch of people trying to help people whatever it wasn't doing it for her she wants to take down the 12 she wants to leave the 12 she goes to constantin's like i need some help and he's very reluctant to give it to her because he said this is a death sentence if you get this information like you're just gonna end up probably dead and she's like i don't care it's what i want he gives her some information and then he hugs her so tightly with tears in his eyes like it's the last time he's ever going to have his arms around her. That scene broke me. 
he clearly knew that something like this was probably going to happen. I don't know if he knew it was going to happen in this way so soon or the entire picture around it, but everyone who gets close to the situation dies. Like, that's why, you know, this show is ending probably in a pretty tragic way with a lot of people probably going down. Maybe the 12 gets destroyed, but maybe Eve, Villanelle, other characters end up dying as a result of it. And I think in some way they've worked their whole lives for this purpose. So maybe they'll be okay with dying if it means the end of the road for the 12. But I just feel like at this point, the writers really worked hard in this episode in thinking we need to end this in a way where we have Villanelle's life in danger and Eve is sitting there watching her die and holding her in her arms. And I think they got so set on delivering that moment and like having a couple of powerful scenes that I think they sort of lost the logical arm of it. And how do we make this happen? I think the Villanelle stuff that that does make enough sense. I mean, you you laid that out perfectly. She ultimately wants to take out the 12. This is the one way that she can sort of cleanse her soul. But they didn't stick the landing with the Eve part of it. And so it all just feels a little bit muddy. Yeah, and there's only a couple episodes left. And there's a lot still to sort of figure out. With just a few episodes, where exactly is this going? Can they take down the 12 in three episodes because it feels like they're nowhere really near getting everybody there's only just been like a handful of people they've been able to get to there's not enough time to really do this so my feeling is is that it's not really going to be about taking down the 12 unless they all get them all in a building together and blow it up and in that case i'd be kind of like eh, yeah that's not really that satisfying the show has always really been about Eve and Villanelle and their relationship with each other and what they feel for each other and how it's going to end for them. It's less about really taking down the 12. I think they, of course, want to, but it's really what is going to happen to these two characters that we're all invested in. And I think there's enough time to do that, but I don't think there's enough time to do everything. I think this moment and going through this, Eve is probably maybe going to realize more viscerally than ever, like what she actually feels towards Villanelle. Like there's nothing like watching someone almost die in front of you. That's probably going to make you open your eyes to some level. Maybe she's going to act on things in a way that she didn't previously. I mean, there's always been this interesting dance between these two characters. I kind of feel like if they don't resolve the whole storyline of the 12, you can argue, and there's already been, you know, people chattering about this online anyway, that this episode could have been a backdoor pilot for a Carolyn spinoff at some point down the road. Spinoff. Spinoff. Spin spin what spin am I chanting a Carolyn spin One no, episode I would, ago. I would absolutely watch a Carolyn spinoff. I, mostly, I would like to see a 12 spinoff. I mentioned that a couple videos ago. I... I really am interested in the 12, how they all got together. You know, like, I know we know with, you know, Carolyn, but like, how did yeah. it turn from an anarchist group into a group of assassins? <laughs> there is a lot of story here to tell. So I would really like to see that. I don't want to see the 12 taken down. I want to see another show pop off. Well, I think the frame it in kind of the way you did just a minute ago, if this show is about the relationship with Eve and Villanelle, kind of through the context of the 12, maybe the next show is about the lore of the 12 and understanding mm -hmm. them. And there's a lot of interesting stuff there, but a lot of interesting stuff in this episode overall. I Like, like you said earlier, Villanelle is probably alive. I don't think we got to worry about that. No, I don't think, no. I don't know how much effect how effective she's gonna be at anything with an arrow in her back but how pissed off would the audience be me included to kill off bill and l with still more episodes left to go like no. i don't know that she's gonna get out of all of this alive and if she doesn't she doesn't yeah. but not with then what what are we watching eve <laughs> go around and try to what get revenge for what yeah. happened like no i want to see them working together we only have a couple episodes left like just give us what the people want all right well we will be back of course to discuss these remaining episodes but hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of those follow us on instagram at mad and just tv and we will see you here next time